Welcome to the 11th devlog of my Milkman game. We are nearly there, folks. I'm covering sound and music today. The hills are alive with the sound of music. No, not that type. More like this. And something really special which I'll leave to the end of this video. Personally, I think sound and music can really change an interactive piece of art like a game. I had a dream of my wife. She was dead. But it was all right. From something that feels one-dimensional to something that feels real to us. Take watching a movie, for example. What's more important, audio or visual? Well, with the exception of silent films, I would argue that audio trumps visual. For example, is that my briefcase? Is it your briefcase? Yeah, it is. Why? You want it back? What about your wallet? What else you got for me? Huh? Is that my briefcase? Your briefcase? Yeah? You want it back? How about your wallet? Pew, 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 pew. You can get away with dodgy visuals, but if your audio is misaligned, out of context, too loud, or the wrong pitch, we pick it up immediately and subconsciously as well. So I start exploring various sounds for a car crash using freesound.org is really broad and can be very high quality. I wanted to make sure that I was only using the part of these sound effects which were relevant to the game and selected parts of the clips as necessary. I then tested the basic audio source and code out and it did sound kind of strange though with the same collision sound again and again. So I randomized the audio source and it's called when a collision occurs and it started to sound a bit more natural. I also added code to randomize the pitch and volume of the collision sounds. Naturally, I repeated the process for the glass bottles and added glass bottle breaking sound effects. Although all the code was essentially the same, it just wouldn't work. I looked it up incessantly on the web and saw a suggestion that perhaps I was losing the sound because the object to which the audio source was attached to was destroyed immediately after the audio source was called. So instead I chose to turn off destroying the bottle just to see if it worked, and magic. The sound played. Although now I had to contend with full milk bottles bouncing around all over the place. I added a delay to the destroy function, which is conveniently contained in the destroy function, and frankly, it looked kind of weird. So I moved the whole audio source to the broken glass bottle object and set it to play on awake instead. This looked and sounded a lot more satisfying. I then thought it was a good idea to replicate the collision sounds for when the civilian vehicles crashed into each other. At first it sounded like a disaster, and I didn't really like it, so I just dropped it. As an aside, I noticed that the black vehicles were performing quite weirdly. I knew it must have been something I had uniquely applied to the black vehicles because the other vehicles were fine. Turns out that I had carelessly added a pox collider when messing around with triggers for the sound effects. I promptly deleted this and the black vehicles returned to normal. Now I get to one of my favourite parts, the hum of the engine. Again, I found something suitable on freesound.org and implemented it onto the player vehicle. Which, of course, sounded strange because it was as if the engine was idling despite accelerating and decelerating. So I scripted a change to the pitch, depending on whether the petrol is being applied, and still it sounded a little unnatural. So, I tried to make the change in pitch to be more proportional to the maximum change in pitch, but I got my maths wrong and it ended up sounding like this. I tried again by adding an idling speed element to the pitch, and it just sounded like a really sick cat. I eventually got it to work though, and I was pretty happy with the sound. In 
fact, it sort of reminded me of the car sound effects in GTA 2. I then discovered, however, that when I reversed, the sound basically turned off, so I just scripted a conditional statement to also change the pitch of the engine on reverse. The only thing left was to attach a little the jingle sound to the delivery signs, and voila! I had a fully functioning sound effect system. Now I get to the part which required the most skill and effort, but not on my part. My friend, Adam Grindley, or Bod, or Dude, as I call him, composed a couple of songs for me just to practice making music. And frankly, they sound amazing. And guess what? They've been playing in the background for this whole video. My only brief to Bod was that I wanted something that sounded chaotic and silly, like those tunes from the Overcooked games. So, without further ado, this is what the background music will be like with some gameplay. Bearing in mind, the full loop is almost two and a half minutes, which is more than enough for a single run down the street. Finally, Bod composed a bonus track for me, which sounds like this. Isn't it amazing? I've yet to decide how to use this, but perhaps for a bonus level, high score screen, or victory screen. Either way, if you enjoyed this video, please do remember to give it a like, it helps like-minded people click onto this video to share this ridiculous game, and if you're interested to see where my game dev journey goes, please follow by subscribing. Until then, take care, and bye bye.